What's up, everybody? Welcome to Racer X Films. My name is Kenny Day. I'm with Fox Racing. Today, we're at the legendary Fox Raceway. I know most of the people will call this Paula, and I get it, but hey, we got that there for a reason. Uh, I'm filling in for Chris Kiefer today. I'm gonna do my best to give you guys the insight. Uh, today, we are, as you can see, 2024 Rockstar Edition Husqvarna. That'd be the 2024.5, as you would call it. Uh, a couple of things that you can see new on this. It's been a big sensitive, in my opinion, sensitive topic is the frame, all right? So we've made some frame changes. Husky went in, uh, changed the way that you can see the hanger and the mounts. We'll zoom in on all this stuff. Basically hollowed this thing out to give it a little bit more flex. Uh, personally, I spent some time on the Husqvarna years ago when I would say it was in its prime days of being very compliant. It was a beautiful machine. And anywhere in California, you could ride a square edge track and the Husqvarna was always my bike of choice. Why? Because it would always absorb any type of square edge. And it, honestly, I could just ride it wherever I wanted and it would work. So with that said, they've made changes over the years to the Husqvarna, the KTM, the Gas Gas. The bikes have become more rigid. Uh, now with that comes with some discomfort for certain people. Personally, I also rode the most recent KTM before the factory edition, before the change of the frame. And when I hopped on it, I was like, wow, this is rigid. I felt like I was riding a Honda. Uh, so with that said, a lot of involvement from the race teams, a lot of involvement from the R&D, they come up with a setting that is going to give you more flex, more comfort. And by doing that, like I said, they changed parts of the frame, they changed the engine hangers, they've also, change the size of the bolts and the linkage made them smaller, which oddly enough, will give you more comfort on the track. So we're gonna go test those things out. Outside of that, all new, as you can see on the front, this black piece on the front fender is the CUO, Connectivity Unit Off-Road, which is basically a GPS. Under and behind the front fender, you have what is called the brain, essentially, that is like a Lit Pro. Uh, Husqvarna has also teamed up with Lit Pro. So now all the things that you see the factory teams doing, the way that they can change the engine maps, the way that they can see where they're on the gas, where they're off the gas, you name it, you can do that now. That's the cool thing about this bike. You're able to adjust anything that you want to adjust, which honestly I think is really cool, right? At that point, you're almost buying a bike that you like, the way it looks, you like the way it feels when you sit on it, but with the adjustability, you can do whatever you want with this machine. So. If you want to go in, you want to change your in engine braking, make it less, more, you can do that. You can go all the way down to the point of where your RPMs are on the start. Pretty cool feature. Outside of that, as you can always see, when you look at the Rockstar Edition bikes, man, they look cool, right? It comes with all the bells, the whistles, wheels, the pipe, all the things you would want to buy if you just bought it stock off the showroom floor. So we're gonna go out and ride today. I'm actually really excited. I've been riding a Suzuki, so this is gonna be a fun one for me. I don't have to kickstart it. I got some power. Um, I'm actually really thrilled just to hit a button today. Uh, so yeah, we'll see how the day goes and we'll come back and uh, we'll talk about it. All right guys, here we are. Put about an hour and a half on this thing today. Uh, prime conditions for what I think this bike needed. We had some soft stuff, some deep ruts, and then we also had the complete opposite. We had hard pack choppy. Um, things that we would really bring out if this frame was better or not. So I'm gonna start with the positives of uh, what I think the chassis is doing. I do think it's better than the previous model or the, the 2024 frame. 
the updates that have been made does make it, I'm gonna give it a number of five to 7% better. And the areas that it's better for me, lean angle, really trying to get into the corners. I've always struggled on these bikes, coming down the straightaway, get into the bumps, and you're trying to jump around, find a better line. I used to really struggle with the front end wanting to wash, and I never trusted the front end. So I don't have that today. That was, that was a huge improvement, especially in the hard pack stuff. I was able to just kind of point the bike where I wanted, go wherever I wanted. That was a huge plus. Um, I will say though, I still feel some rigidity. Now, with this whole new system, the, the frame, now that we have the components to adjust, I made a big change at the end of the day, went into the map, took away all of the engine braking, as less as I could go. I even slowed down the throttle response to, I think, two. What that did for me is it actually freed up the chassis a lot. So where I was still feeling the rigid stuff was coming into the turns. Still get a lot of jot, 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 jot. And the harder I charged, yes, it got a little bit better, but it was still there. And over a five lap period of me trying to charge with that, it's really starting to wear me down. So the thought was, hey, let's get rid of the engine braking. Let's free the chassis up. And that was actually a massive difference. Uh, I do think everyone should take advantage of the fact that they can change the things that they want changed. When I changed the uh, engine braking, sure enough, coming into the turns, a lot more free feeling. It didn't take the engine braking away to the point where it felt like a two-stroke, but just freeze the thing up. So a lot more, a lot less chatter to my hands, to my back, everything. So that was a huge plus. The throttle response that I changed also in the dry conditions don't need that lively motor, right? So it basically mellowed it out. Very similar to if you turned on traction control. On tracks like this, where it is hard and choppy, being able to detune the engine to where you can just kind of use the power and roll it on, that was awesome. Uh, outside of that, I still love this bike. I do get highly upset when I feel that rigid stuff, but after the first session, I was a little frustrated. Went and talked to everyone at uh, WP, talked to the guys with Lip Pro. We made the changes, and now I will genuinely say that I do like the bike a lot more than when I started the day. The big question is, hey, is it worth buying this? Is it worth taking what you have and upgrading? I do know that you can upgrade your current models with this whole system to be able to control everything. My answer is yes. Being able just to have this ability, you don't have to do anything other than hop on your phone and change it, that's awesome. I do think obviously the pipe, the wheels, all the little bling stuff, that's gonna save you money in the long run. I, I do think that this is a great package overall. Um, I think we'll show in the videos, just roll it through the app. Once you do connect to the bike, uh, that's a little bit of a setup process, just like anything when you buy it new, just like hooking up a new TV, go to your Bluetooth, go through the steps. Once it's done, the fact that you can just adjust it on your phone, hit upload, that's so cool. So if you're one of those people that want to mess with things like I am, I always want to tinker, um, do that. Come out, prepare yourself for a long day at the track and just run through everything, even if it's three or four laps at a time, but make all the changes that you want, go out and see. And I, I think that's a really cool option. Uh, one thing that they did update, like they said, the linkage, they put in smaller bolts. That was supposed to give you a bit more comfort. Did I notice it? Not, not massive, right? I mean, I was looking at the whole package today, so I couldn't tell a massive difference from there. The little things that really, like I said, made a big adjustment for me, being able to detune the thing, really slow down that engine braking. I did make some minor, uh, minor adjustments to the suspension. Um, I'm at right at 155 pounds right now. So I went three clicks softer on compression on the fork. I also did the same thing on compression on the shock. I actually sped up my rebound. Um, I, something I've always noticed is sometimes when I'm out there and I feel that chatter and I feel like my rebound's too fast, I've always found that I should go the opposite way. And that, that always works for me. So like I said, adjustability, continue to try. I do think this is a wonderful package. You have everything you need here, so give it a shot. All right, from this point on, like I said, we're gonna go take this thing to more tracks, get more time on this bike. I do believe that the more time we get on the frame, the more compliant it'll start to feel. I, uh, first out of the box, anytime you got hop on a fresh bike, that frame's gonna feel kind of stiff. So we'll take it to some uh, deep, loamy dirt, try to get into the high des a few days, really get to see you know, if the things that they've made different on the chassis will shine in some of those other areas. So you can go on to keyforinktesting.com. 
uh, see some write-ups on there. I know we'll, we'll continue to put updates on there. Also go to racerxonline.com, get more video insights, see the video from today. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you. See you next time.